6,000 police have been mobilised because of fears of more riots across the country. There are reports up to 30 protests are planned for Wednesday. The Prime Minister has promised communities will be kept safe. Keir Starmer said he had assurances that there were adequate officers in place to cope if violence flared up. Here's our political correspondent, Damien Grammaticus. It's just over a week since these riots began. Violence, first in Southport, spreading to other parts of England. Now, for those who've taken part, the legal consequences are starting to be felt. This morning in Liverpool, three men who've all pleaded guilty to violent disorder are due to be sentenced. Yesterday, police chiefs were summoned to Downing Street for the second emergency coordination meeting in two days. The Prime Minister says more sentences will be handed out in the coming days. Over 400 people now have been arrested, 100 have been charged, some in relation to online activity, and a number of them are already in court. And I'm now expecting substantive sentencing before the end of this week. That should send a very powerful message to anybody involved, either directly or online, that you are likely to be dealt with within a week and that nobody, but nobody, should be involving themselves in this disorder. Some have already appeared in court. This was 20-year-old Liam Gray, arrested in Rotherham on Sunday. He denied the charge against him. A list circulating online has suggested more than 30 locations could be targeted by rioters today. Police in London issued a warning saying, we know about the events planned by hateful and divisive groups across the capital. They've made their intention to cause disruption and division very clear. We will not tolerate this on our streets. After the rioters targeted hotels housing asylum seekers, some groups who work with refugees have been told they are at risk. One organisation in Merseyside says it has closed its offices but will try to protect the premises today. We will also be um, creating, a, I suppose, what I would call a peace line, um, for want of a better expression, so that we and the local community and the priest from the local church, which is part of our building, that we can all come together to demonstrate that we believe that we should have hope in the future rather than put, putting up with hate. First, immediately. Sakir Starmer last night said those who felt threatened would be kept safe, but it's a severe test for a government that's been in office for just a month. Damien Grammaticus, BBC News, Westminster. Well, our correspondent Chichi Uzundu is outside Scotland Yard and she explained what the Met Police in London are doing to reassure communities. Well, the Metropolitan Police, in a lengthy statement that they issued yesterday, said that they plan to use every power, every tactic and every tool at their disposal to try and keep people safe. And it's not just Londoners that they're concerned about. Some 6,000 officers, riot op uh, trained police officers, are going to be deployed across various locations. Uh, 1,200 of them, we do believe, will be helping colleagues regionally and locally. Um, and we do believe they'll be stationed around uh, motorways so that they can get to some of the sites if violence does flare up. They have said that if people are concerned, they should stop and speak to a police officer and that uh, local communities will see a larger increase of police presence in their areas. As Damien said in his report, they say they are not tolerating anything that could cause people to feel unsafe. Their job is to keep law and order and they plan to do so. In their statement, they say they know about the events planned by hateful and divisive groups across the capital and they've made their intention to cause disruption and division clear and they will not be tolerating that. Thanks to Chi Chi for that. Let's speak now to Helen King, former Assistant Commissioner at the Metropolitan Police. Thank you for coming on the programme. No problem, Lewis. So just talk us through, with this intelligence, it seems, around 30 potential locations that could see activity today, what kind of preparations will police and police forces uh, be undertaking right now? Well, there'll be a, a huge structure now by now put in place. Um, 
as you say, the intelligence is really important. So there will be specialist intelligence staff gathering that together to work out the locations, to try and get ahead of who's going to be involved so preventative action can be taken. Um, but as well as the public order trained officers that we're, we're seeing in, in TV reports all pitted up, there are also a lot of other teams at work, a logistics teams, people arranging the rosters so they know who's on duty when, briefing teams, um, dispatch teams in, in the radio rooms, um, command teams to support that, that um, operation. Even people like the vehicle maintenance units will be working overtime to make sure that the public order equipped vehicles are ready and out on the road. And then we've also seen this um, big investigative effort. So people getting arrested, being interviewed, being kept in custody, files of evidence being prepared so they can be put before the courts really quickly. So this is a huge logistical operation um, and the police are, are clearly making sure that they're as ready as they can be to respond to whatever happens tonight and in the days to come, as well as carrying out all the normal 24-7 policing that needs to be done to keep communities safe. I think most people appreciate that resources will be stretched, of course, and this does put extra strain on everyone involved. But when you look at the level and amount of violence on the streets over the last week, is there an argument that police could have done more to stop it earlier? I think it's it's very difficult to, to see how that could have happened. From what I've seen in the reporting, the police have got there quickly. They've acted with great courage and professionalism to keep people safe. And no one should underestimate the challenges of gathering evidence and getting people before the courts as quickly as they currently are. This will be having a, a knock-on effect um, on, of course, the, the, the um, levels of tiredness and, and resourcing in, in policing. There will be officers working 12-day shifts, having rest days cancelled, um, and so on. And there will be some work that is either having to be put to one side or slowed down so that this can be prioritised. And the role of social media, of course, is frequently raised. Uh, what's your view on it? Um, clearly, the different platforms there's a range of responses and, and levels of helpfulness towards the, the police. Um, I would like to see them, once this is over, in slower time, really thinking about how um, those online platforms can put more of the skills, more of the algorithms, more of the artificial intelligence in place so it can be proactive in preventing the spread of uh, incitement to violence, incitement to racial hatred. Other industries, I think of the car industry, it's through the security um, techno technological developments that have reduced the ease by which cars can be stolen now. I would like to see the online platforms acting as responsible global businesses and thinking about how they can design and set themselves up to prevent some of the very negative sides that we're seeing coming out at the moment. Okay, Helen King, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you.